So it is time for that moment we discussed a couple of weeks ago. It's time for me to step down as manager of FC Vaduz. The board understood my decision, and the club should be fine as we have a strong squad with plenty of young talent waiting in the wings, fantastic facilities in a soon-to-be expanded stadium, and a solid, dependable backroom staff who will ensure... Oh, half of them resigned immediately after I did. So let's see what the AI can do with it, I guess, as we move on with Liechtenstein. Our first task of this new era will be in the Nations League. Can we make it to Division A? Looking at this group, it's gonna be tough. Still, if Liechtenstein are to progress, we've gotta start taking on tougher and tougher opponents. And two minutes into our first game against Serbia, a sign of how tough it would be, as Milovanovic gave them the lead. But that was not a lead they would carry into halftime as Stefan Hartmann equalised. And then Fabio Burmester put us into the lead in the final moments of the half, 2-1, and the Belgrade crowd stunned. Things got even better in the second half as we earned a penalty, Burmester extending our lead, and a bad night for Serbia got even worse with this late own goal. We really did a number on those corners. And how do we follow up emphatic wins in this series? With dull nil-nil draws of course, still a good result, and top of the group after two games. In case you're wondering how FC Vaduz are getting on, well they appointed Bruno Iacopeta to replace me, and fully restocked the backroom staff. With the fate of Liechtenstein future young talent in the hands of new head of youth development Claudio Calvi. Transfer-wise, no sooner had I left than Chris Brady was shipped off to Chelsea for £8 million, probably spread over eight years. Tony Block also left the club, heading to FC Utrecht. Patrick Seabird, our star young midfielder, goes to Hoffenheim. Pascal Olner crosses the border to Switzerland to join Luzerne. And Lucas Ulrich, who I signed just a year ago, heads to Union Berlin. £29.5 was spent bringing new faces in, not a Lichtensteiner amongst them. Let's trust the process though, for now. In the national side we also have a new face as Jordan Keeling finally got his paperwork completed, and he was straight into the side against Bosnia, where just like the Serbia game, we went behind early on. But new boy Keeling would be instrumental in our comeback as he set up Pascal Ulner for the equaliser. Ulner would turn provider for the next goal as he laid off Korner's cross for Kraus. Early in the second half there would be a penalty awarded to Bosnia. We'll have to change the camera angle on this one as the construction work at the Rheinpark Stadium blocked the view. But anyway, Schleck got down low to preserve our lead. And late on we got our corners going again with the ball eventually falling to Axel Glinden. 3-1 and very much on track. And yet again we followed an impressive win with a draw against Turkey. A score draw this time more on that later. So with two games to go, we were just edging the Turks on goal difference. Serbia having an absolute nightmare, already relegated. So with Serbia at home and Bosnia away to go, two wins and we pretty much guarantee promotion, right? We just about managed the win against Serbia, leaving it late as Blinden scored in stoppage time. But a win's a win, bring on Bosnia. Corners, corners were key again as Block headed home. And then look at the control and finish here from Uwe Wolf. Woof! That was game over, and that was group over as well. But before we get to the table, ooh, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this in Football Manager before. And the reason the game gives for it is just, well, well, let's just take a look. We finished second. Same number of wins as Turkey. Goal difference the same. Goals for and against the same. And I know away goals don't count anymore in UEFA competitions, but we even got a goal at their place. So how was this group settled in Turkey's favour? By a random choice. That's promotion to Division A of the Nations League. Decided by random choice. Thanks for that one, football manager. Great way to make up for international management being cut from FM25. So, on to Euros qualifying, and a real leap into the unknown. Dad jokes aside, once the draw had been made, we found ourselves with Austria, Wales, Azerbaijan and Bosnia. Now, of course, after the Nations League, we know we can beat Bosnia. We should be able to handle Azerbaijan easily. But as for who takes top two between us, Austria and Wales, that's going to be really tough to call. We started our campaign away to Austria with Patrick Siebert giving us a first half lead, only for Austria to fire themselves level 
early in the second half. Honours even, a fair result. At the end of the 2034-35 season, we hosted Wales and took the lead through Uwe Wolf. Wales got back in it as young defender Botzenhart gave away a penalty. Stadium renovation now complete, nothing was blocking that effort. But just as it seemed another 1-1 draw was looming, Martin Rinner won the ball and charged down the right, crossing to Keeling, who set up Kraus. A win snatched at the death, and with Azerbaijan up next, a real opportunity to seize control of the group. Ah, or a missed opportunity. 1-1 really is the go-to score in this group so far, as we sit second in a tight table. FC Vaduz, by the way, finished the season fourth in the Swiss Super League. They did, of course, win the Liechtensteiner Cup and made it to the Champions League playoff round, losing out on penalties to Ajax. By the start of the 2035-36 season, there'd been something of an exodus. Jordan Keeling being sold to Basel, Martin Rinner off to Bayer Leverkusen, Yanis Alleg transferred to Sion, and young midfielder Frank Alfanger out on loan to AFC Wimbledon of all places. Left back Yannick Goop was allowed to go for free to Thun, and they also lost star centre-back Stefan Hartmann, who ran down his contract and went to Kaiserslautern. But hey, as long as my players are getting more game time, some of them in more competitive leagues, I'm happy. Now remember how I said 1-1 was the go-to score in this group? Well, that's what we got in September, as we needed a late Hans Brahma goal for a point against Bosnia. And after Lorenz Kraus had given us a first-half lead in the next game, we were this time on the receiving end of a late equaliser, as Austria held us to a 1-1 draw at home days after Bosnia did. All meaning one point covers the top four with three games to go. We travelled to Wales with both sides knowing a defeat could spell disaster. Luckily, we had Lorenz Kraus who opened the scoring and then won as a late penalty. Fabio Burmester doing the job from the spot as Wales left their comeback goal just a little bit too late. And we finally broke that run of 1-1 draws. The group was still tight, but at least we now had a game in hand over Bosnia and Wales. And we would play bottom side Azerbaijan at home next. But no, I dare not say anything that might invoke the FM gods at this point. An early penalty suggested they were smiling down upon us. Or maybe not as Fabio Burmester got fooled by the world's bounciest goalkeeper. Our prayers were finally answered as Fabian Schreck gave us a lead in the first half. And then Lorenzo Renz Kraus sealed the three points with six minutes to play. Two wins on the bounce, putting us second in the group with Bosnia, the only team that can overtake us, up next. A quiet first half burst into life in stoppage time as Jordan Keeling followed up on his own corner to score. Coming two minutes into stoppage time, that goal was technically scored in the 47th minute. And so was this one, as Bosnia started the second half hot. You might have expected Bosnia to pull out all the stops in search of the winner. The winner that would send them through at our expense, but we controlled the remainder of the game. And even in stoppage time, we were creating the best chances. But in the end, look at that, another 1-1 draw. Meaning despite only three wins, we take the second automatic qualification spot. Both Bosnia and Wales would feature in the playoffs, but blew their second chance chances. But anyway, we've made it to a second consecutive Euros, but who are we going to face in the group stage? With England and Scotland co-hosting, the draw was hosted by a uh, Northern Ireland Euros legend, I guess, David Healy. We were in pot four and immediately group A looked like one to avoid. Switzerland got the final spot, but if we had been in England's place, this would have been an all-German-speaking group. Co-host Scotland got a decent draw. Italy got an even better one. Group D is definitely the group of death. And with Group E complete, that meant we were going to be the very last team out of the hat. Ho, 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 could it get any tougher? So that's our group. Spain currently ranked 6th in the world, and Portugal ranked 7th, and Ireland having a resurgence in this save at 15th. Do 50th ranked Liechtenstein stand any kind of chance? Well, let me know what you think about that draw in the comments, and follow our adventures at the Euros right here.